Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a mystery we need to try to solve today. So this was literally just listed on Reverb less than an hour ago. And it caught my attention because you get a flamey top, Les Paul shaped thing with a wraparound bridge, but yet it only has a neck pickup? That's a configuration that I've been looking for on a Les Paul and... I can't say this one quite does it for me, but this is a mystery that we need to solve. Because even the seller doesn't even know what it is. But they're describing it as a Gibson Sunburst reissue melody maker. Special P90 bridge pickup, okay. Custom shop order. Ooh, I don't like that title. I would just label it unknown Gibson model if I was unsure of what it is. Melody Maker is definitely correct because we can see the Melody Maker style headstock, but calling it a custom shop board is kind of where it draws the line for me. So let's just take a look at this thing. We've already talked about the main portions of the body. We've got some sort of aftermarket wrap tail piece. I've seen this one before, but I can't remember what it's called. But the next thing we need to note are the very strange locations of our knobs. That's not something Gibson would ever use. Whenever they do a single pickup guitar, it's either in the junior configuration, so one right here and then one directly below it, or they do it in the regular formation but omit these two. So it's kind of like a staggered look. This looks like some sort of a Epiphone layout to me. And unfortunately, the seller does not have any photos of the pickup route, so we can't see if it's got like a long neck tenon or how it was even constructed at all, or what P90 pickup they have in there. That would be very pertinent to helping identify this. Because if that has some sort of a date stamp on it, that could help you date when this might have happened. But I've got to say, it doesn't look half bad. This looks very similar to some tops that Gibson would put on guitars in modern days. I've seen these like little ribbon type things go on quite often and I would say this is a decent top and it appears somebody's actually played it quite a bit. You've got some wear and tear all over this thing. And the finish isn't awful. They actually did a really good job on this burst but they kind of messed it up. <laughs> they didn't know if they wanted to do a rim burst or a teardrop burst, so they kind of mixed the two. And in my opinion, this doesn't look very good on the top half, but fantastic on the bottom. Moving on to our fretboard, it appears to be some sort of a rosewood. It's got the correct shelf that a melody maker would have, kind of like the Les Paul Juniors. You can also see the body shape is correct. You've got the hard line and then the edges smooth off. And then we get to the headstock. This Gibson silkscreen looks correct, depending on what era Melody Maker this is. As the first time I saw this, I was really hoping this was a 50s Melody Maker that somebody kind of glowed up. And, you know, for 750 bucks, it would be well worth it just to pick this thing up. Because we've got the old style tuners on here. They've got the buttons, but these are metal tips, so they're not necessarily the vintage correct ones. But looking at our truss rod, actually having that exposed can tell us a lot. It is a Gibson style truss rod. You can tell it's starting to get to that limited adjustability territory. That's got a decent amount of life to it before you'd need to reset it. But that does look favorable that this is a Gibson product. But something that doesn't look favorable are these. So it's got the two screw holes that we're used to seeing right here for the Gibson style bell truss rod cover. You can kind of see where it was. But seeing this makes you think Epiphone or import model overseas, those typically use three screws. There are very few Gibsons that use a stock three screw truss rod cover. And heck, it looks like we have some sort of an acoustic guitar <laughs> string for the low E. So that's a little bit suspicious, but what I'm guessing is when somebody modified this guitar, they just put a different style truss rod cover on it, and then we just got these residual holes. I would not worry too much about that. Flipping over to the back. Okay, well, we can clearly, very, very clearly see that that was crudely routed out of this body, so that could not have came from the factory like that. This reminds me of the back plate that I made. <laughs> but we've got the flathead screws, so it looks like somebody's trying to make it look older than it is. But yet, we've got the Phillips head on two of those. Okay, they just kind of used whatever they had. But that explains why the control layout is just a little bit strange on the open face right here. But, you know, it kind of makes sense at the same time if you're not used to how Gibson lays these things out. Now we've got the rest of the body to deal with. It's kind of hard to tell anything from this photo except for that it has been used. I mean, the edges of this look a little bit overly rounded, especially right here. So that tells us that this is likely not the original finish. But it's this angle right here that makes me go, 
Ha, huh, this cannot be an original 50s melody maker because those have a little bit more of a heel to them back here. And in this photo, it looks like they're trying to show you that the neck is all good and straight. Kind of hard to tell, but you know, that's a very hard photo to take. Okay, so what we know now is it was likely a real Gibson melody maker at one point in time and it's been heavily modified. Let's see what the seller tells us. They're believing it's a 2000s Gibson reissue melody maker. If I remember correctly, I think it was 2007 when they first started doing these guys again. Something like that. So they're thinking it started life like this. Okay, so you can see that has that area I was talking about, how it starts off flat and then it rounds off for the rest of the body. And these things started with a satin finish on them. But you'll see, these have this giant pick guard on here. So technically, if somebody were to replace that, we would see screw holes, right? Not necessarily. So what's happened here in order to do this conversion is one of two things. They either routed some of the body away and put a legitimate maple top on this, or what most likely happened is they stripped all the finish off this thing and put a two-piece flame maple veneer on top of it. That accomplishes two things. It makes the guitar look way fancier than it used to, and it hides all the evidence of everything else that used to be on this. That's why they would have to take it to the back and route it so they could have controls right up here and they could place them wherever they wanted. They decided to keep the wraparound bridge likely due to simplicity and they wanted just to build their own one pickup neck pickup guitar. It's kind of like a, a little jazz Paul. And these things were not overly expensive. I mean, even today you can pick them up anywhere between four to 700 bucks, like the brand new still in box. Sometimes a collector might pay a little bit more, but I don't really view these as super collectible to begin with. However, our headstock, it's nowhere near the same. This looks more like the vintage style. It's very possible that somebody went through and kind of rounded the corners to make it look like an older one. And then maybe they did replace the silk screen because that's not exactly lining up either. It's fairly close. But the biggest thing to me is these guys had serial numbers. Whereas this guy does not appear to have it. And that's what scares me away most on this thing because no serial number means your guitar's likely been stolen in a worst case scenario. Other times, who really cares about the $500 Gibson? You're making a project out of it. They didn't really think that far into it. It's possible that's true. Or maybe this really did start as a 50s one and somebody's modified it because that would mean you have a Brazilian rosewood fretboard on this and it would be well worth the 750 because the single cut Melody Makers existed from 59, I think till early 61. You can check out this review and demo if you want to learn more about them. But honestly, I, I don't think the logo matches with that one either. This reminds me of the late 90s. You can kind of see what I'm talking about right here with the All-American series, but even that's not a 100% match. So as far as solving this mystery, I'm not sure we're going to be able to, mainly because we don't actually have access to the inside control cavity shots. Now, I don't care about the one that they made. I'm more so interested to see what we could potentially find underneath this neck pickup. Because if we could find that this was a legitimate 50s one, this is a fantastic deal. Even if somebody didn't like it, they could make some sort of a different thing. I guess looking underneath these tuners might be able to give us a hint. And the fact that it doesn't have a serial number impressed into it, I mean, a lot of things are going towards this thing being vintage because these had an ink stamp serial number. So if you refinished it, it would be lost. And these were student model guitars all those years ago. So even less people cared about what they did with their serial numbers back then. So maybe it's possible somebody just sanded the heel down a little bit, or, or maybe it's just a homemade project. It's kind of hard to tell. There's just too many variables and too many things that this could be. And unfortunately, not enough information. So you guys will have to tell me what you think this one is. All I've got to say is, you know, considering the circumstances, I think it looks all right. But I can tell you with 100 million percent accuracy that this was not a custom ordered or limited artist edition. Because that would have to come from the custom shop. You'd have a custom shop decal. You'd have a legitimate serial number. This is something that somebody has made themselves out of potentially an existing Gibson guitar. But hey, for 750 bucks, it could be a fun buy for someone. But if it just turns out to be a refinished one of the reissue versions, um, 
you're definitely maybe overpaying a couple hundred bucks, but this guy does not seem to be super firm on his price. He's open to offers. So hey, I'll leave that channel supporting link in the description. If you don't like that it's only a neck pickup, go ahead and route it out for a bridge pickup. You should have enough room in there to install two new pots. If not, you could maybe do a stacked system where you pull it up to control the tone and then push it down to control the volume of each pickup. It's a hack job anyways, maybe you could actually just enlarge that. So for our playing demo today, let's go ahead and check out a Gibson Melody Maker. <laughs> Only question left, would you rock this strange melody maker conversion type guitar or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.